Now let's talk about one of the most virulent organisms we know that is Staphylococcus aureus. By coccus we mean it is spherical in shape that differs it from the rest of the rods like bacilli. Okay, so now the Staph aureus it's a gram positive cocci in clusters that differentiate it from the streptococci which occur in chains. Apart from this, they have certain other properties like they are catalase positive and coagulase positive. The catalase property helps to differentiate between the streptococcus genus and staphylococcus genus. Whereas the coagulase property helps to differentiate other species of staph like Epidermidis and Saprophyticus. Staph aureus also shows beta hemolysis. That means it's going to completely lyse the RBCs and it forms a yellow golden colony. By aurum, we mean it's golden yellow in color. So that's why the golden, ye golden yellowish pigment. Next thing, what are the diseases caused by Staphylococcus aureus? The first most important disease is it causes hospital acquired pneumonia. It's also called as nosocomial pneumonia. It is also the most common cause for ventilator associated pneumonia. Second most common cause would be Pseudomonas aeruginosa. It is the most common cause for osteomyelitis as well. But keep in mind, in sickle cell patients, the most common cause for osteomyelitis would be Salmonella, not Staph aureus. Another common systemic infection caused by Staph aureus is acute endocarditis. It is the most common cause for acute endocarditis. Please keep in mind, Strep viridens is the most common cause for subacute bacterial endocarditis and for acute endocarditis is Staph aureus. Now, apart from systemic infections, it can also cause certain local infection, localized infections like skin infections. Cellulitis would be one example. Another example would be impedigo. But you have to also keep in mind another species of Staphylococcus, specifically Staph epidermidis is associated with catheter associated endocarditis. So what is the virulence factor that actually helps Staph aureus to cause so many infections? It binds to the FC fragment of immunoglobulin G that leads to enhanced inflammation and we cannot control that inflammation. Okay, so that is the problem with this. Anyways, apart from this, it also produces certain super antigens and the infections caused by super antigens are toxic shock syndrome, scalded skin syndrome and food poisoning. Now, the toxin that causes toxic shock syndrome is TSST1, toxic shock syndrome toxin. And as the name says, it's very easy to remember that it's toxic to us, right? What are the symptoms that are seen in toxic shock syndrome? fever, hypotension and a presence of rash that would be the important symptoms and it's very commonly associated with use of vaginal tampons. Super antigens, so what do they do? Super antigens cross link the alpha chain of MHC2 which is present on the antigen presenting cells with the beta chain of the variable region in the T cells and because of which there would be enhanced inflammation and activation of the macrophages. Those macrophages will release certain acute phase reactants like IL-1, IL-6 and TNF-alpha. TNF-alpha is very toxic to us and fever is actually protecting us from the effects of TNF-alpha. Another example for the super antigen would be the food poisoning caused by Staphylococcus aureus. This enterotoxin is actually heat resistant. That means it's even stable at temperatures of 100 degrees. And very important to keep in mind is that this is caused by the preformed toxins. Food poisoning with Staphylococcus aureus is very fast acting. That means the onset of the symptoms would be seen within one to six hours. It's one of the fastest acting toxins. It may usually produce watery diarrhea. Now, the foods that are classically associated with the food poisoning of Staph aureus are meat, custards or potato salads. These are certain things that you need to keep in mind and in the vignettes they are usually going to use certain words like picnics. A family went to a hiking picnic and then suddenly they all developed a diarrhea. 
So if it happens very early in onset, like as we mentioned earlier, within one to six hours, you have to think it is staph aureus. In contrast to the super antigen mechanism of TSST1, the exfoliative toxin that causes scaldet syndrome actually cleaves the desmoglein in the desmosomes. That's why the cells cannot adhere together and the skin is going to peel off. That's what is called as SSSS, Staphylococcal Scaldate Skin Syndrome. And how do you treat these infections? The first line of drugs that we are going to use is methicillin, but many of the Staphylococcus aureus are resistant to methicillins these days. So for them, we are going to use vancomycin instead. And the Staphylococcus aureus, which are resistant, are called as MRSA, methicillin resistant staph aureus. So the treatment for MRSA would be vancomycin. And we also have resistant to vancomycin these days. So what is the treatment for VRSA or vancomycin resistant staph aureus? The higher drugs would be quinopristine and dalfopristine, together known as streptogramins or linozolid can also be used. So that's it for Staphylococcus aureus.